Hi, hi Eunice. I'm Louisa from Sky Sports News. I've not been here before, so nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to just ask a question first off about the Champions League and get that one out of the way because I know we want to talk about the North London derby. So um, if you don't mind, um, you seemed um, very angry. In your words, you said you were angry about um, VAR and about goal line technology. Um, so what were your main issues there? And um, does it really prove that VAR and goal line technology needs to be used in the women's game across the board? Uh, well, yeah. I, I was angry, like I said, after the game. Uh, I felt it was unfair uh, for us that we didn't get those those calls. Uh, but I think this is where we need now to focus forward. Um, we're not the first team that, that felt that things have been unfair. And now we need, we can't do anything with that frustration, but we can maybe turn that into energy into the coming games here and, and focus on on what we can control. Um, and and that's of course what what we're gonna try and and do. Um, the only thing I want to say about the competition is to say that it's um, when you see the use of technology for it. I think it's of course you see how much UEFA values that competition when you compare it to all other competitions that they are playing and and their technology demands of that and. Um, there, I think, UEFA Women's Champions League deserves a, a higher priority uh, in the way that they prioritise club competitions. Do you mean because they use the technology? Is that, is that what you mean? Because they implement the, the technology in the Champions League women's game? No, I mean that you will see with all UEFA club competitions there will be different regulations on at which stages different technologies like VAR and goal line technology is, is used and uh, it's not hard to see that the earlier it's used in the competition like the men's champions league where it's used in the playoff games um, before the group stage i mean it's it's evident that that shows the the priority of the competition um in terms of um saturday's game let's look at tottenham and um, what have you made of their problems this season uh, I, I've seen a Tottenham that uh, probably has been a little bit unlucky. Uh, they, they've been working really hard. I think they have a, a quality the team of, of players that we, we have a lot of respect for. So um, I expect a, a team to and an opponent to play against that will make life very hard for us on Saturday and we need to be on top of our game in order to uh, win the game. Okay. Um Tottenham sacked Rayhan Skinner um, after that run of nine defeats. They obviously had a good result against Leicester last time round. Um, Vicky Jepson has taken control. In terms of that win that they're coming off the back, is she a bit of an unknown quantity and could that be dangerous? Uh, of course, there can be things changing here because... Um, Vicky had very little time before the Leicester game to, to prepare the the team and now she has had more than a week to do so I, I would expect if there is any changes here now that she would like to try and implement this is probably the game that they're going to use it but when we are playing this tight playing schedule we need to put our, the main focus on ourselves and our own performance and um, we, we need to take details from the opponent of course but we need to understand this game we need to have a flexible mindset and we need to be content with knowing that we can't fully know what they're going to do on uh, tomorrow on the pitch, but we need to be confident that we have a way that we can deal with it, whatever they do. Okay. Um, in terms of Arsenal then, um, the title race is still on, would you say? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we, uh, we, we go for every game and try to do the very best possible in, in that and try to win every game. And uh, that's our focus to have for the rest of the season. Um, how do you think that Saturday will set up in terms of a feisty? Do you think it'll be a feisty um, North London derby? These things usually are, aren't they? Yeah, uh, usually when, when we play uh, against Spurs, they're, they're a very physical side, they, they foul a lot uh, and, uh, and we need to handle that, um, together with the referee of course, 
Uh, but we're ready for that. We know that the pitch is not perfect there. Uh, we know that it's going to be a physical game. Uh, but we focus on what we can control, and if we do that well, I'm very confident that we'll win the game. Um, and then just to bring it full circle, in terms of VAR, would you like to see it introduced in the women's game across the board? Because you spoke about equality of technology. Um, I, I, like I said before, I'm, I'm not sure that, that that's where the imminent need is uh, for the women's game. Uh, just like when we spoke about heating pitches in, in January, I think when we look at the investment in our game, we need to look at it from a really broad and holistic perspective and seeing where do we get the most value for money. And I've said that many times, and but I said it again. I think one of the most underfunded parts in, in the women's game is the academy system not only in England, but, but across in, in Europe. And that is so fundamental to, to raise the quality of the game uh, and to make that foundation really, really broad, is to invest in the, in the future and the education of young uh, girls playing football. And uh, I, I don't want investments in the senior game that comes on the expense of that, uh, because that is so important. Yeah, I mean, just to round off then, do you think that the women's game across the board needs more investment? That I definitely believe in. Why, 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 why would you say, why does it need more investment? Because of, of a reason I said where you, you say that, um, of course, better education is going to lead to better players. Uh, and better players is going to lead to a better game. And, and a better game is going to lead to... To, to even more more interest and, and more opportunity to bring fans to the stadium and, and to enjoy the games. So I think it's a really, really positive cycle if we can invest in that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Debbie, would you like to? Yeah, are you able to give us an update on Beth Lees? Uh, I am, but I don't think I can add much than I've already said that her rehab is going as planned. Uh, she's working incredibly hard and uh, we're happy with the progress that she's doing, but we don't have anything specific yet to communicate in, in any date of return to play and so on. Thank you. Thanks. Brilliant. We'll come to the call now. Tim. Hi, Ernest. Um, I wanted to ask my first question about Jodie Taylor because I haven't had a chance to ask about that yet. Um, uh, kind of a three-pronged question. First, whether she's available tomorrow and will be in the squad. Um, second of all, the kind of role you envisage for her over the next couple of months, especially given she hasn't played for a couple of months. And the third part of that question, was her signing maybe tied to the injury prognosis of Steph Catley? Because if Katie McKay is needed at left back more often, that potentially takes forward away. And was that part of your thinking in the signing? So first question was easy. It was if she's available tomorrow. Yes, she is. Uh, second part of the question is in what role? Um, of course, we have to be realistic. Uh, she hasn't played for, for quite a while. Uh, she has practiced on her own. She's done a brilliant job there, but she hasn't practiced in a team environment uh, for quite some time. So <coughs> of course, we, we need to, to bring her to give her time as well. Uh, but we can see her as a player that impacts our culture and, and our environment in a positive way, oh, just in training, uh, but hopefully so also in matches. And then the third question to see, thinking, I mean, we, we were looking at, at forwards because we saw that we're from a numbers perspective, we're, we're running low on that and uh, we're, we're not that many injuries away from not having having any squad depth at all on, on those positions. Um, but Jody Taylor wasn't triggered specifically uh, for that Steph Catley is unavailable here now. Like we, we have a quite positive prognosis on, on Steph. Uh, we don't expect her to be sidelined much more than now the games up here to, to the international window. And, and after that, so we, um, that that's not something that we at the moment think it's going to be, be season ending or anything like that. So uh, it's more tied to the forward situation overall uh, than, than to Steph Catley. Thanks, that's good news. 
And uh, just my last question is about, you mentioned there that the pitch uh, tomorrow won't be great. Um, and I guess whether there's anything to learn from last season's fixture, because, I mean, Spurs have stopped playing these at the big stadium, um, and I think it's reasonably obvious why, and obviously that's their right. But last year, it was a game again on a bumpy pitch, again coming off the back of a Champions League away game, albeit it was a day later, so there was a day less. Is there anything um, to learn from that in terms of preparation uh, this time around? Yeah, I always think it's <clears throat> you. You learn from every game, uh, but you, we 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 see they do some things that they're they're really good at, like they're how 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 they stretch uh, opponents' teams' organization with with the way that that they build up and 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 we need to uh, to be really good at controlling those spaces and um, and and to be humble in our positioning, uh, so so we can. Can work forward uh, as much as possible uh, in the game. So, I think it's about getting all those details right. In in an hectic period for us, there is no shortcuts. We uh, we need to do all those preparations right in order to uh, to be able to to execute our game on a pitch that is not going to be perfect and on a on an opponent that is definitely going to try to make life as difficult as possible for us. Thanks, Jonas. See you tomorrow. See you. Thanks, Tim. We'll come to Alan. Good morning, and all. Uh, thank you, Mr. Edelon. Um, I'll talk about the Brazilian defender, Rafaela. Uh, she is joining Arsenal this season, and it seems that she had no problem at all to adapt to the team and the English football. Uh, I would like to know your opinion about her as a person and player, uh, and also her quickly the adaptation and solid the development have surprised you in any way? Uh, no, I, I have only good words to, to say about Raffaele. Um, I think she's, um, she's a world-class central defender and um, I mean her, her experience uh, being able to play football in Brazil, uh, USA and then China before coming to us in in, in England, I think it's obviously has helped her a lot in order to already being able to adapt to two different to two new cultures before she was coming to to us. Uh, very comfortable with the language, um, and um, she she's almost a complete football player with uh, really good technical ability, uh, great left foot, which is rare in in women's football and the central defender positioning and. Uh, and an excellent physical ability <clears throat> and so uh, we're we feel happy that we have her we feel lucky that we have her and i am very happy that she is at a place here now where i think she can showcase her um, talent globally uh, because i think that was part of the problem when she was in china that not many people saw her saw her games and uh, even if i did see a lot of those games and that's why we decided to to sign her i i don't think many people did and uh, i think she has a level of her play that deserves to be seen by many thank you very much thank you thanks adam we'll come to dan hey i hope you're well um i'd just like to go the back to the vicky jackson point um and the spurs and leicester game was there anything that you saw from that game what, that was kind of different for what Vicky was doing compared to what Spurs were playing like under Ian? I prefer not to uh, to say actually um, and like like I said it was so little time between that decision and, and that game so I don't know if like I know how when you work that short of time with a team like there's very limited amount that you can influence she has had much more time now with the team, so I think what how they play tomorrow, it's gonna be the first real sign of of how Spurs is gonna looking under her. And how mindful are you of the threat of Beth England? Obviously, we've already seen glimpses of what she can do at Spurs. She can obviously get goals from all different positions in the final third. So, yeah, how how do you kind of prepare for playing against her, a player like that? Um, I I mean we're. 
<coughs> with with all due to to respect to to Beth England, we 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 have been playing a, against a lot of good nines recently with uh, Bunny Shaw and Sam Kerr and Leah Schiller. Uh, so um, we 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 know it's not only about one player; it's about how the whole team defends, but but also how the whole other team attacks with with the opponent. So. Uh, we we need to treat the whole Tottenham team as a as a threat. We need to be humble. We need to do our very best here tomorrow in in order to give us the best chances to win.